Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Zebrafish, Zebra Daniel, the Daniel Rario. I'm going to talk about why this is a fantastic fish to keep in their hobby, fish keeping, as well as possibly the answer to the cure to cancer. So, where did they come from? They're from the South Asia, they're found in like small tributary streams and things like that. Proper names, the Daniel Rario, and let's start by talking about why these are fantastic fish to keep for the hobby. The main reason, I think, is they add so much to a tank in that they never stop moving. They're always on the go, there's lots to see, they've got lovely colours, patterns, you can get long fin, short fin varieties. They're just, they never stop moving, which I think, especially for kids, adds so much more to the enjoyment of a fish tank. But they're also incredibly adaptable, so a, a wide range of water parameters and conditions. They're very hardy, so if you're not quite up on top of your maintenance and things like that when you are a kid and you're learning the hobby, you're not going to wipe out a tank. They're very active, they're social, they're very lively, so they just give that sense of energy to a fish tank, which I think keeps... Uh, especially younger uh, aquarists, keeps their interest in there because they see things moving around. Um, it just looks that much more better. But they're also very peaceful. They get along with a wide range of other fish, meaning that you're not limiting yourself as to what you can keep in a tank with them. So they're perfect for community tanks. They're perfect for getting the interest going in, especially young people. And it's, they just add a great visual appeal to any aquarium. And when we're not talking about beginners and kids, they're also really easy to breed and that is one of the most fascinating things about this hobby. I've always talked about me being a big fan of guppies because you tend to just need to have a guppy and water and you will eventually see some breeding behaviour. These guys follow along a similar vein. If you get enough of them, you're bound to see some babies, you're bound to see some breeding behaviour and it's all stuff you can observe relatively easily firsthand. They don't often get scared away or they need dark corners to do their stuff. You will see it happen and it will happen in front of your eyes. Uh, and that's something I think can be incredibly useful to build your skills as an aquarist, uh, learn a little bit more about the hobby and deeper understanding of fish and fish behaviour and things like that, which draws us on to why are these guys so useful in medical research. And I'm not going to lie, the ability to put on a thumbnail, these fish might cure cancer, does have a certain appeal to me as a YouTuber, but it's actually true. Um, I live in Sheffield in the UK and we have in Sheffield, run by the university, the Zebrafish facility where they conduct lots of research into exactly this fish. Um, I've actually spoken to some of the people in there, I was hoping to arrange a visit, that might come one day in the future, but they told me all about the work that goes on in there and it's specifically the ease of breeding that helps make these one of the best fish to study. So as I'm sure you can tell by looking at the both of us, we actually share a lot of the same genetic makeup. And the ease of being able to breed these fish so regularly and easily and on a schedule, you basically just have to wait until you turn the lights on and then that's when you know they're going to drop eggs and leave those eggs. The, the range of studying that can be done because of the genetic similarities as well as them leaving perfectly clear embryos that you can monitor in real time the development of those embryos, that lets you, if you are a scientist, be able to study all kinds of de developmental diseases and behaviours as well as the things that they're studying at the moment are things like looking into research on Parkinson's, cancer, all kinds of neurological problems. The, the, the list is vast. I will put down below a link to some of the research that's going on right now with these fish. But it just makes me think, what an amazing thing to get involved in, that the things you're doing now and the fish that we're keeping here are also going to one day lead to something like the cure for cancer. So if you're after keeping them just to enjoy them as a fantastic little hobby fish to keep or you're interested in starting your scientific journey and being that person that uses these guys to cure cancer, what, what better credentials could you have as a fish to be the ideal first fish to keep? So with all that said, I have been keeping these fish for years. I have bred them for years. I have never tried to breed them. It has just happened. I normally keep them in a tank like this where I'll just have a bunch of Java moss and every now and again you go, oh, there's another one, oh, there's another one. It would just happen. I've never actually tried to breed them and there are many techniques out there, but this time I'm going to combine a newish technique along with one of my other hobbies of 3D printing and see if we can't accelerate or make better the breeding program. So I'm going to I'm going to use a breeder box like this. This particular one is the Fluval breeder box. 
Uh, and I'm going to use a 3D printed part that I've made here and see if we can create an automatic egg catcher. And that's because these guys are egg scatterers. What they'll do is every morning when the lights come on, simulating sunrise, that's when the female will drop some eggs, the males will all rush in and fertilize it. And if you don't do anything about it, generally they'll go in and then eat all those eggs. So what we want to do is get the eggs away from the fish and off the safety. You can usually do this in a breeder box or something like that where you would move fish around. But I'm going to try something a little bit different. In the past when I've had success, because I've had to get rid of some of these fish because I've had so many of them, I would just put them in a tank with loads and loads of java moss or something like that and just the sheer volume of numbers some would survive. But I'm going to move some of the fish into a smaller tank and see if we can't do something a little bit different. This is not my original idea, but basically I've created a box. So I've 3D printed a box. I've 3D printed a box and inside I've kind of got some sloped sides and then a hole here connected to an air uplift. What I'm going to do is attach an air line here, which will draw water up through here. And the idea is I have a little grid that sits on there. The fish lay the eggs in here and then they get sucked up through here and put into the external breeder box and then the eggs can develop in there. It's not my idea. I think I first saw it on Blake's Aquatics, so I'll probably have to give him a shout out. Um, I, have, I haven't intended to copy his design, but I've ended up with something very similar. Um, we'll see how we get on. In terms of tank setup, that's kind of it. So I've got this little 30 centimetre cube. That's the egg catcher there. I've put in a little bit of moss on the top. What happens is when the fish go in and the lights come on in the morning, they will go in and amongst the moss. The eggs will fall to the bottom and be sucked up through the air lift which we'll focus on eventually, maybe. Uh, as you can see, going up there into the breeder box, and the box is on the side. Fill in there, and tomorrow morning, hopefully we should have some eggs in there. Um, I've not put anything else in here because I don't want to confuse the fish, so I want to give them, this is the one place I want them to lay their eggs. So we'll let them do that. And we need to pick a two to one ratio, two females to one male works best. The easiest way to sex the fish is basically the bigger, rounder, plumper ones are the females. So that one there is a female. Uh, and then the skinnier ones, like that one there, is a male. I'm doing brilliantly at focusing on these. So we're going to start with two females and one male. Uh, and the idea is just make sure they get everything they need. So you want to be feeding them good quality foods multiple times a day, get them into breeding conditions, nice clean fresh water. Temperatures doesn't seem to make a difference as far as I can tell, but yeah, given a fair wind, we should get some eggs in the morning. Right, that's the next morning. I missed the lights coming on, but as you can see, they are on. Uh, and we'll check see if there's any eggs. The fish seem to be doing what the fish do. They seem okay. And then if we have a quick look in the breeder box. Oh, I can see eggs. I don't know if you can see them through the camera, but yeah, there's maybe, I don't know, a dozen or so. Sometimes they get trapped in the, the capture device and will get brought up later. But if you can see them, there's a couple that are a bit easier to see towards the back of the thing. I might have to break out a macro lens to see this properly. But yeah, it seems to be working. Um, so what I'll do is probably put a little bit of sponge up there just to stop any fry that do develop going back into this main tank and then just kind of leave them to it, let them grow up a little bit before we start thinking about moving them into another tank and then it's just a, a case of rinse and repeat the process. And that is something worth considering because you need to have a plan what you're going to do with all these fry. In the past when I've done this I've generally just left them to it. I've had them in tanks with big clumps of java moss, they'll lay eggs, eat the majority of them and one or two would make it every now and then. Here, we're kind of maximising and optimising the amount of fry that we can get out of this, so what are we going to do with all that? So don't do this if you don't have a plan to deal with all those fish. I just wanted to give some of the littlest fish, some of the sometimes most boring fish, some people would say, in the hobby, a little bit of love. I think they deserve a bit of the spotlight as much as some of these more impressive, larger guys. Thank you for watching. If you're into this kind of thing, please consider clicking that subscribe button down below. And there's also a Friday night live stream. Most Friday nights, 9pm UK time. We have a bit of a laugh, some quizzes and games and things like that. Come along, ask any of the questions you want to ask. 
Uh, we get to see you there. Thank you for that. See you in the next one. Bye.